Marquette. The other one, these Musketeers. It was uh, September the 23rd of last season. Musketeers won in five, so they were trying to repeat that here for this outgoing senior class and the first strike there for Ava Martin, one of the big three for For the Creighton Blue Jays, Martin delivers the first point for Creighton. The outsides are so strong on this, and the this Creighton team between Ava Martin and Nora Sis. They will be getting the multitude of sets coming their way, and with good reason. They are the top two hitters on the team, top two hitters in the conference. With a answer for the Musketeers, there is Stevens with a slide to the pin. One of the one seniors down. being honored tonight, Sarah Stevens. She is really effective on that backslide. She's the strongest blocker on the Musketeers. She'll be looking to have a good match today. Service here for the Musketeers, Emma Grace. The honor today is senior day, but she will be returning next year to play with her sister, freshman, coming in from Northern Kentucky in Notre Dame Academy. Swing there for Getzinger comes up with a point. Ellie. Elise Getzinger comes in with 211 assists for Creighton. Excuse me, kills for Creighton. Ava Martin has 337. That's second on the team, and Nora assists 349. But the one passing out a lot of the assists, a thousand of them, as a matter of fact, is Kendra Wade, who was a player of the year in the conference last year. Nice dugout by Wade there. And she, of course, Sorrow, another one of the Xavier seniors. Nice dig in the back row. Good blast there, and Waite comes up with a block and then a kill. Nice combination there at the pin. Wait, part of the 1,000 club when it comes to assists. She is able to dish out the ball. Look at the setter as the quarterback that's on, on the court. All of the success that the attackers have can be attributed indirectly from Waite. She's the one putting the ball in the right spot for them to attack. Service there for Eva Martin, who started this weekend with a .7 Ace percent stat. Christy Peffenberger called that outrageously insane. 4 1 here, Creighton, as they pick up the point. Kendra Waite will get the kill on that one as well. They always say you don't want to go against a setter in a head to head battle at the net. They've got those strong hands to put it away. Service there there for Creighton and Ava Martin and brings it back to the Xavier Musketeers. Here's Lucia Corsaro. Playing in her 385th set today for the Musketeers in set one. 1,095 career digs, 2.85 digs per set in her career. And missed some time earlier this year with a concussion and the concussion came from her teammate Emma Grace. They were trying to dig Emma Grace. She's so powerful on the delivery. She was knocking people out of, out of practice and knocking people out of games for two, three games at a stretch. Power player in the front row and the back. Tight pass, dug out. Wait, won that joust there for Creighton. Ball touched over there by Norris Sis, and it's down in the front row for a point. Not able to get over Caroline Spielman, sprawled out to pick up the dig. Law couldn't quite get over her. Maddie Bilinovic, senior from Independence, Ohio, back to serve. And Xavier today honored seven Creighton seniors and wish them well on their next step. Get them out of the conference. Good trouble. <laughs> They've had a strong lineup here for years in this Creighton team. Uh, impressive trouble with that. 11 straight regular season titles now for the Creighton Blue Jays. That one sent long by Norris Sis. Had a chance to talk to Ryan Tice, the Marquette head coach, prior to Friday's match and asked him what the secret is to try to beat Creighton. And he's the only one that's done it recently and most consistently here in the conference. And the key was to make them uncomfortable early, find some way to make either Ava Martin or Sis uncomfortable off the beat. Xavier doing just that. They've really picked up, on the Musketeer side, they've picked up more aggression from the service line. And that's exactly what they can do to put a dent, you know, make it hard for these Creighton Blue Jays to pass the ball. Force them out of system with a tough, deep serve like that. Good job there. That is a blast off the pin. It's dug out nicely by Corsaro. Is saved by Eloise Tchaikowski. And that just lines up another hammer 
That one, a kill for Norris Sis. When Sis attacks the ball, it's at such a high point. She's a jumper, but she also can just put that ball straight down when she can get around that block. Sis is second, that's time with Elise Getzinger for the team lead early here in the first. Kendra, wait to serve. Swing down the middle for Caroline Spielman for Xavier, the junior. Hey, Xavier's hammer, Emma Grace. Well, dug out nicely by Villanova. Great play by Corsaro. Corsaro there again. Flaw with a little contact able to get it up. Great save by Kimberly. Swing Lee again there. for Sis, and that one beats the big attempt of Emma Grace. That just speaks to how athletic Kendra Waite is, that it was a tight set. She had one hand. She reached over the net and could still dish it out to Sis so Sis could put the ball down. Here's Kendra Waite, player of the year last year in the conference. Here's Tim Bernthal Booty, head coach for the Creighton Blue Jays, calls her just a freak athlete. There's a lot of things that athletically that none of the Blue Jays can do. Yeah, that play that she just did, for most teams, that would have been considered a bad ball that would have come attacked right back at them. Instead, she turns it around, saves it, and successfully dishes out a kill to one of her teammates. Center of the year last year in the Big East Player of the Year and also an ABCA third-team All-American. And by the way, she is one of three that's on the ABCA Player of the Year list, and those other two, of course, Eva Martin and Nora Sis. Back to serve for the Musketeers. Kelsey Neeson having a great second half of the season, really grown here through her freshman campaign. Local player here from Roger Bacon High School. Tough serve. Swing across for Nora Sis, and Sis finds the back corner. Sis likes that down the line shot, and she's had success with it two or three times already today, so we can expect her to keep going back to the well, down the line, so those blockers really need to get wide on her to try to take away that line shot. Back row, reception there for Tchaikovsky. Ball sent over there by Emma Grace. Big blast cross court. That was Ava Martin, and what a delivery. This Creighton team is leading the Big East Conference in every single possible category, offensively and defensively, except for Diggs. And despite that, their libero, Maddie Bilinovich is still leading in digs in the conference. So they have every category covered where they're just an all around, very talented team. He sends it over for the Musketeers. Bilinovich right there. Center attack and a quick hitter for Kiara Reinhardt, who's a senior. Reinhardt into the day with 130 kills for the Creighton Blue Jays and the best blocker in the conference. Sis to serve. Nice job there by the Musketeers to keep that alive. Margo Kemp. Emma Grace sent that one long. Thought she got contact there at the net. Just deep. And Creighton cruises out to a 12-6 lead. Time out here for Christy Peffenberger and the Xavier Musketeers. Trying to slow the momentum a little bit because with this Creighton team, they are so talented that they can get on autopilot and start just racking up points if you don't, you know, kind of stop the run, kind of reassess the game plan here. Creighton out to a 471 hitting start, 500 for Norris. It's 100% for Ava Martin and Elise Getzinger. It's a pretty nice start, I would say, to a match. And the Musketeers at minus 77 to start off here. And Xavier down six. Christy Peffenberger. Takes the timeout. Musketeers eight and nine coming into today in conference play. Christy at 139 head coaching victories for Xavier, 90 in the Big East. I think the nice part about it, the one footnote there is her 120th career head coaching victory was against Creighton. It's the first time the Musketeers have beaten them. Wow. Well, looking to do it again today. This Creighton team's tough, though. They have only lost two matches the entire season. That's only been to number two Nebraska and number three Louisville. Both of those were five set yes. matches. They almost came away with the win. And of the 26 matches they've won, they've only lost five sets total. So that means 21 out of their 26 wins were all clean three set sweeps. So when they get into a match, they're there, they take care of business, they take care of the ball. 
and they get it done in three sets. And they're three and two against the top 20. Nebraska, by the way, the national finalist last year, Louisville, two years ago, a national finalist. Ball through, the Musketeers get a point out of the timeout. And rotating in, Casey Quinnishe for the Musketeers. Margo Kemp comes out. Kemp picked up that kill. He's had a fantastic season for the Xavier Musketeers. Margo Kemp coming in with 236 kills. That's third for Xavier. Quinnishe, one of Xavier's better servers. A little off balance on the back row. Creighton able to handle it. Martin winds up, fires it into the block. It's a point for the Blue Jays. That's where Logan Flaw, typically a very strong blocker, but she's only 5'10". And so when she's going up against players that are six foot one, that's three inches that that team doesn't have to worry about. They're getting the timing down perfectly. Whereas on the Xavier side of the court, they have to time that jump perfectly to optimize the max height. So therefore, Olivia Houseman is a freshman for Creighton. Swing there, blasted into the block, sent back. It was Jay Johnson with the delivery there for Creighton. Musketeers find the back row, Logan Flaw. Kendra Waite with a rare error there. She was a little disoriented, I think, tried to set the ball back to her outside and set it right over the net into the hands of the Musketeers. So Xavier now with a little 2-0 run here. See if they can capitalize on it. Logan Flaw. Back for the Musketeers. Logan, a senior here, 87 matches coming into today, 298 sets, so she'll hit 300 for her career when the day's over. Into the day with 1,375 assists, 1,000 of them were this year. Had to play behind Kerrigan O'Reilly for all those seasons and really stepped in and done a tremendous job for the Musketeers, the primary center here this season. 13. Setters are often the unsung heroes that are on the floor, and yet they're the one of the most important positions on the floor. And here, in today's match, we have the two top setters in the Big East Conference. They're able to dish out a lot of balls, and usually the hitter, the attacker, is the one getting all the glory. They're the ones that get to bang the ball, go through the block, get that loud pop that everybody cheers for, but what you don't see is how much work goes into the setter's thought process to get them the right ball at the right time. Well, serving here, 13 double-doubles this season. 44 career aces. Swing across, and that one wide for Getzinger. A point for the Musketeers, and Xavier within four. 3-0 run, Flaw serving. Musketeers serving tough, going for those deep corners to get the passers on the Creighton team. Nice touch there for Eva Martin, just kind of nestled that one down into the center of the court, stopped the Musketeer run and make it 14-9. That spot has been a little bit of the bane of the Xavier defense all season long, that right in the middle of the court, over the top of the block. Cindy bracing her to serve. She's a Cincinnati product out of Ursuline Academy. There's a kill there for Anna Taylor. She gets on the board for the Musketeers. Anna Taylor all season long has had a lot of success in those kind of combination combination plays where she's not just getting a high outside set, but where they bring her around into the middle of the court behind Sarah Stevens so that Sarah Stevens draws the block and she's there behind them to put the ball away. Taylor averaging 452 on her hitting percentage in three out of the last four. That ball sent over an easy point there for Creighton. Anna Taylor, when she gets a swing, she takes care of the ball. She's averaging 333 on the team in her hitting percentage. Not a lot of errors. Smart volleyball player. Martin picked up that last kill back to serve here. It comes up with a service error. It's three now for the Blue Jays here in this first set. It's 15-11. Christy Peffenberger about the messaging coming into today. She said, look, we're better than our record. This group has been a little inconsistent throughout this season. Sort of they go out there, they try to build up their mental strength, this, just reinforcing how well and how skilled they are. That was another kill there from Nora Sis. Just kind of go out, play, and see what comes out of it. Of course, the Musketeers get swept. In a tight second set with Marquette on Friday, and that ended the postseason hopes. This is 
Maddie Bilinovic to serve. Good start there for Carolyn Spielman. Nice play. Nice dig, turns into a conversion. At the tape for Kendra Wake. Maddie Bilinovic, stellar dig there to keep the ball in play. The fact that she could make a good pass out of that is impressive. Bilinovic into today with 370 digs, 24 aces, and 77 assists to start the proceedings. Tough serve, had almost no rotation on that set. On that serve. Swing across there for Sis. Nice work there by Emma Grace to keep it alive. Attack there, just tipped over by Ava Martin. Musketeers scrambling. Grace has to send it over. Reset here for the Blue Jays. Right to the pin. Beautiful dig there for Grace. Musketeers trying to scramble. Logan Flaw into the a retaining fence over there by the Musketeer bench. Got a piece of her head coach as well. That turns into a point for Creighton. It's 18-11 and a 3-0 run now for the Blue Jays. Yeah, Creighton's just hitting tough. I mean, they're hitting 481. We've got 16 kills on only three errors. They just This team does not make a lot of mistakes. It, they make it very difficult for their opponents to get points. Musketeers into positive territory now, and any percentage at 095. It's four kills for Xavier. And Creighton now hitting 481 here in this opening set. Seven kills for Norris, Sis, five for Ava Martin, two for Elise Getzinger, and Kendra Waite. Waite already has 11 assists on the day. Yeah, Creighton has been fighting off some tough Xavier serves. Xavier's been serving deep, forcing them back toward the back line to force them to have to kind of battle through to get a pass. But Kendra Wade is so fast, she's so effective at getting her feet to the ball and still able to find something to do with it. Even when that pass isn't perfect, they're able to just keep running that offense on autopilot where they have so many options. They've got their outsides, they've got their right sides. They can do combinations in the middle where they just, they just have so many options that they can go and put the ball away. And so despite Xavier being such a defensively strong team, you see Emma Grace, Lucia Corsaro, Logan Flaw all keeping that ball alive, but over time, the Creighton just wears them down and is able to find the floor at some point. They're just all around a very, very strong team. So here we'll see Kilinovic back on the service line. She gets very little rotation on the ball. You can see she keeps her hand completely flat, so it becomes almost like a knuckle ball. Very little rotation. Nice reception there from Emma Grace. Served the pin. Margot Kemp dug out there by embracing her. Ball over and right heart. A little dump on the front row. It's what we call the campfire and not the good kind where everybody <laughs> sits around, nobody goes after the ball in the middle of the floor there. Nice weather out for a campfire today. <laughs> Just not inside. It's the bad kind of campfire <laughs> here on the floor. <laughs> Milanovic working on a 4-0 run here. Nice reception there from Emma Grace. Spielman delivers one back row. Creighton going to scramble out of it. Sent over by Martin. Great dig by Emma Grace. Swing there for Spielman blocked. Corsaro is there for Xavier. Musketeers trying to keep it alive. Last gasp there for Anna Taylor comes up short. Emma Grace showing why she is such an effective all-around player. On that play alone, she just picked up three digs, and that's why she's leading the team in digs, which very rarely happens that your best hitter is also your best defensive player. She can be a weapon. She can be a defensive asset no matter where she is on the floor. So the fact that she can play all six positions and there's never a weak point for her speaks to the success she's had in this program. It's off serve there, and that was an ace. First of the afternoon for Creighton, and that was from Bilinovic who continues this run. Now it's at six. Creighton showing why they are the toughest servers in the Big East Conference, leading in aces. They serve aggressively, and yet they don't make many errors. And they often go for that back line with a knuckleball where players think it's going out of bounds, and then it drops at the last moment. In system there for the Musketeers. Grease's ball sent back. Camp up front. That ball fought off. Flaw sets the far pin. And a Taylor denied. 
dump there. Villanova got a piece of it. It was sent over a little bit of a free ball there and got some help at the end from Kendra Wade who picks up the point. Xavier's made some adjustments to their lineup throughout the season. They had previously been playing Emma Grace and Anna Taylor opposite one another as the outsides, but they've since moved Anna Taylor over to play more on that right far side of the floor. I think to spread out their offensive threat so they're not going against the best blockers all the time. 7-0 run here for Bilinovic. Spielman dug out nicely by Bryson. Big swing and powered it through the block attempt. Nor assist delivers. Time out here for the Musketeers and Creighton needs two to take set number one. But Christy Beppenberger's gone through all three of her timeouts here in this first set. Creighton hitting 500. The Musketeers over at 33. Eight kills already for Norris assists. It's five for Ava Martin. Yeah, Creighton's able to just keep going to their outside weapons. They're just two of the best outsides that you will see. And the fact that they're getting one of the best setters in the country serving them up the ball, like it's just a very difficult situation to defend against. They are physically taller where they're playing at a higher level. So blocking against them, you have to time it just perfectly to get exactly in the right place at the right time. And yet they're still able to go up above and around their blockers to find the floor. Kirsten Bernthal Booth is the head coach for the Creighton Blue Jays. 24 seasons overall, 608 career victories, 21 seasons to Creighton. It's 496 victories. So they can make a little run here in the NCAA tournament. Figure you pick up maybe one, two in the Big East Championship. They're already in the semifinal. You can get to 500 for her this season. In the Big East, she is 187 and 16. Ooh, not bad. That's it's a pretty good, pretty good uh, resume there. Villanova still back at the service line. Quite the run, serving run here. She's attacking that back corner, usually toward Caroline Spielman. It's up to eight. Spielman, nice job there. Flaw sits for Spielman. Sent over. Wait. Quick hitter, and that ball is long. It's a point for the Musketeers. Sent out by Nora Sis. A rare miss for her, a little off the net. Was hoping to hit those high hands of the blockers and just missed. Just her second air of the day for Nora Sis. A match best eight kills. Here's Eloise Chankowski with the signature one finger spin on the service. Nice reception there for Breisinger, and the set a little bit short. Martin drills it into the tape. So Xavier on a 2-0 run net. Martin aiming for blood there, swung away and just was a little too far off to make that angle. Jankowski, good reception, bracing her weight. Back set there for Martin. She delivers in front of Emma Grace. Martin with the redemption swing, went back to the well, the exact same spot, exact same set, that time found the floor. Bressinger rotates out and in now for Creighton to serve. Can her wait? But Gia Johnson's back in and she is on the front line there for the Blue Jays. Block and that'll be the set for the Creighton Blue Jays. 25 13. Creighton cruises out to a first set victory, hitting 455. The Musketeers battle back, but it just 32 in that opening set. Will be important for the Musketeers to keep serving tough, trying to get them out of offense to make that team work harder to find the floor. Xavier with a kill from Logan Floss, Sarah Stevens, Anna Taylor, and Margot Kemp. A couple of digs in there. The dig leaders, Lucia Corsaro with three, Emma Grace with two, and then one for Caroline Spielman. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with set number two right here at Full Sports. Mike Schmalt, Shannon Murphy ready for set number two here. Musketeers trying to close out the season. A little fight here against the Creighton Blue Jays, number five in the country. Creighton is number six on the NCAA committee list, which means they are in line to host an NCAA tournament site. So trying to keep up that record and stay in contention to host it at the DJ Soko Arena, which also will be the site of this year's Big East Conference Tournament coming up here next week. 
Creighton will face the winner of either St. John's or DePaul. That's a 4 5 seed. And I don't believe that's decided yet as we get into the last day of conference play. Service air there for Creighton to start off set number two. And the Musketeers up on nothing. Creighton four errors already today. A little surprising. Off the service line. Here's Casey Quinnishay who's had a nice season at the service line for the Musketeers. Nice pass. Good start there by Bracinger. And a attack air there for Creighton. Give a block to Emma Grace on Elise Getzinger. Creighton starting out with two rare early errors here. Looking to get back in the Musketeers answer with a service error of their own. And that's what will be key for the Musketeers in this set is keeping the runs to one or two. You know, not letting them have those five point, six point, seven point stretches that you just can't come back from with a team like this. Service here for Ava Martin. Martin sends one long. Fifth service here for Creighton today. And Creighton typically seems to go for the back line with that float serve where they're aiming deep, but they're just, they're getting a little too much spin on it where it's just carrying way too long. So they're dropping short. Creighton had five aces, 13 airs on Friday at DePaul. Dropped the first set, 26-24. Musketeers give a point back there with a Logan flaw service there. Not a lot of volleyball has been played thus far in the second set. <laughs> no. Train service errors right now. Everybody coming up with ace practice. Yeah, that's right. Mighty Bilinovic, she should be able to change that. Had an 8-0 run in the first set. Villanova, great dig there on Anna Taylor's offering. Ball pushed over. Flaw there. Corsaro sets for Taylor. That's blocked by Sis. Swing across for Emma Grace. Powers one down in front of Sydney Bracinger. This rotation is a tough offensive one for the Musketeers because Emma Grace and Anna Taylor were together in the front row at the same time. It forces the blockers to have to choose a pin to commit to, and that's how Emma Grace was wide open to take that full swing. Christy Peppenberger said, if anybody's gonna try to press Creighton here, we, she likes her chances with the weapons and the way they stack up against these Blue Jays. Great dig there for Corsaro. Touched over Grace. Wade kept it alive. This with a swing, and that's a point right down the seam for the Blue Jays. Yeah, tough angle there for Sis. She recognized there was a hole in the block she could work with, and she took it. Sis with nine kills now. She hit. 14 against the DePaul Blue Demons on Friday, hitting 231. Even one hit 20 in that match. Swing there for Spielman. Villanova great there. Wait. Sets far side. Rip there. Great. Dug out by, by Corsaro on Jay Johnson. Try Johnson again. That one deflected. Grace Flaw pushed over Stevens. Stevens comes up with a block. Keeps it alive. Big point here, Spielman long rally. Touched over, Wait, saved it, Bilinovic. Sis on the attack, gets the point. Longest rally of the day so far, and even on a tight ball, Sis just showed she can still find the floor, she can find a blocker's hands and do something with it to put it away. 10 kills on the day. 5.33 for the percentage. And here's Kendra Waite. Start for Spielman. Flaw. Taylor gets it down. That's Taylor's second. We're seeing Taylor be utilized in a variety of different ways. She historically throughout the season had just exclusively been on that left outside, but they've been moving her on two balls in the middle. They've been running her on the right side, trying to keep those blockers guessing, take advantage of the weapon they have. Three ball sent up. It was pulled back by Waite and then drilled down the middle. A point for Kiara Reinhardt. Ava Martin will step into the front row while Nora Sis takes the serve. Sis with a service there. Kirsten Bernthal Booth calls Nora Sis one of the nicest humans you will ever encounter. She doesn't play nice. No. <laughs> Not her fault. <laughs> She's good. Not her fault if you're good. 
So back to third now, Eloise Tchaikowski for the Xavier Musketeers. Xavier up 6-5, should mention that here in a second. Reception error and an ace for Eloise Tchaikowski. Fortunately or unfortunately, four out of the seven points have come from service errors from Creighton. It's 19 aces now for the season for Tchaikowski. Try assist there, free ball sent over, and that one cleaned up by Margo Kemp. Musketeer is continuing to serve tough. That's how they are in this set right now. They're trying to force Creighton to have to pass the ball first before they can get into that offense. They're targeting that back line toward Norris. Trouble again, Martin trying to clean it up for Creighton. Flaw dumps over, Billinovic right there. Wait. Attack dug out by Corsaro. Joust one there by Flo, and that's going to be a contact lift there. Martin. Yeah, lift. Yep, you can set the ball over your head. You cannot open hand below your head, or that's considered a lift. 3-0 run for Xavier. And a timeout here for Creighton. So Kirsten Bernthal Booth wants to settle down her Creighton Blue Jays. Xavier on a 4-0 run now to take this 9-5 lead. That's right, Xavier playing good volleyball right now. No errors other than one service error. They're attacking the ball. They've got Creighton out of system, and that's the key. You want to prevent those offensive weapons from being able to have the optimal position to hit the ball. You can do that by serving tough, getting the defense on their heels, where they're kind of scrambling to send the ball back over. That's when you can have your team set up in system and put it away. Xavier hitting 364 here early in this second, and Creighton at 182. Creighton still hitting 386 for the match. Musketeers at 93. Xavier came into today hitting 202 as a team, and it's 324 for the Blue Jays so far in the season. Yeah, the fact that Creighton as a team for the season have been hitting 324 is just unheard of. That's why they're second in the nation for that hitting percentage. They don't make a lot of errors and their effective, intelligent attackers. Hitting is about so much more than just going up and swinging as hard as you can. As an attacker, you are trying to assess how many blockers do I have? How is my set? Is it too tight to the net? Is it too far? Am I, is my jump timed right? Where is the defense lined up? And so you're making a lot of really quick decisions while you're mid-air, and Creighton's able to do that really effectively. But thus far, by the Musketeers serving tough this match, they don't let those attackers do that. They can't make those decisions. Eloise Tchaikowski working on a 4-0 run here for the Musketeers. Big swing, blast out of the timeout, and a point for Ava Martin. They go right back to one of the bell caps. Huge swing there for Martin, and she, she just went right over the top of Logan Flaw there. That was a near 10-foot line. Service now for Olivia Hausman. Good start there for Tchaikovsky. Flaw sets Spielman cross court. Got it down. Spielman with the answer there. Spielman getting more playing time later in this season. The six foot outside hitter. Likes that cross court attack. Started today with 62 kills for the season. And just 30 sets played for the Musketeers. She's been present here in the first two. Little attack touched over by Sis. Tchaikovsky sets for Grace, and that one just denied right on contact. Getzinger over there with Jaya Johnson. Yeah, that's a tough block to, to get over the top of it. 6-4, that's just a large block. You don't have to time the jump perfectly. You can just get those hands over, and it's a force to be reckoned with. Sydney Bracinger, the former Ursuline Lion here from Cincinnati with the serve. All rolled over there by Grace. Villanovic scrambles. Here comes Martin. Smart play. There's trouble on the back row there. Logan Fall. Actually, it's Kelsey Neeson back there. Almost collided with the Chia Corsaro. Martin making the out. smart play, realized she was not in the optimal hitting position, so she hit kind of a cross-body trick shot right to the middle of the floor. Bracinger sends off a service there, seventh of the day for Creighton. Musketeers maintain the lead here, 11 to eight in the second. Creighton staff just shaking their heads at the number of service errors there. 
service line has put out this set. Creighton's only lost two sets, as you mentioned earlier, all conference season. One to Marquette, one to DePaul. That was Friday night. Long way to go here. Kelsey Neeson attack air. Point here for the Blue Jays. Brings them within two. Ava Martin will serve. Yeah, serving is typically one of Creighton's weapons. It's how they get their opponents on their heels and had a hard time getting it into this set. Good job there for Cursaro and Emma Grace guides one into the back corner. Point for the Musketeers. Smart play by Grace, finding that open corner. That's the thing, it doesn't always have to be this huge, hard-driven ball that makes a big kill with big impact. A point is a point, and whether you place it there or crush it, you're putting something on the board. It's been a growth area there for Emma Grace to realize that a little bit more this season for Kirsty Peffenberg. There's a point off the pin there for Elise Getzinger. Christy Peffenberger said, you know, Emma Grace always had that wild weapon of an arm, big hammer. Now she's kind of figuring out what to do with it. And they do expect her back next season to play with her sister. So in another year, Emma Grace here at Xavier. Maddie Bilinovic, back row, Corsaro. Ball touched across. Emma Grace denied. Reset, dug out, bracing her. Swing there, dug out by Neeson. Middle attack, blast, and it's down for Ava Martin. Villanovic back with a tut, tough, tough serve. She packs some pop, but it still is one of those float serves. So it's like a speed knuckleball flying at you. You really need to get your feet behind the ball to effectively pass this. Villanova's been terrific here at the service line today. That one fought off by Corsaro. They get it to Emma Grace, and Grace sends that one long. Three zero run for the Blue Jays. Villanova had an eight zero run in set number one. Yeah, this is a tough rotation for them versus the Musketeers. Corsaro fights it off. Swing there for Stevens, picked up by Villanova. Sis, off the block, point for the Blue Jays. Time out here for the Musketeers as Creighton on a 4-0 run has come back to take a one-point lead here midway through the second. Creighton actually sets the ball tighter than you would expect. Usually... You don't want to set it too tight or you can run into trouble if the set isn't just perfect where you can run into the block. But Kendra Wade is so skilled that she's able to place it exactly where she wants it, even when it's tight to the net. And that's how her attackers are able to hit the angles that they can. When you're tight on the net, you can hit straight down, essentially. So if you can maneuver it around your blockers, that's a really effective way to play. But most people cannot do that, where you find yourself tight to the neck and you're stuck. You're just trapped to have to block the ball or tip it. But Sis and Martin have so many options when they're getting the ball from Kendra Wade. Creighton here with one error in this second set, hitting 368, 423 for the match. Musketeers just three errors on six kills. 143 for Xavier. And Xavier was close to getting into triple digits here in a percentage, but now back to 57. Yeah, they've really had to mix up the shots, and Emma Grace in particular. They have their best blockers on her because they know that she's their most effective hitter. So she's had to really show some versatility today in hitting that line shot. Sometimes she's tipping over the block. Sometimes she's coming out of the back row. She really has to use all of her different shots to try to pick apart this strong Creighton defense. Four Musketeers with two kills. Norris Sis has 12 for the Creighton Blue Jays. That's a match best followed closely there by Ava Martin with eight. That'll give you an idea how tough it is to play against these Creighton Blue Jays. You get your best hitters all with more than 300 kills for the season. They've only got two so far here in the second set. That'll change for Emma Grace. Nice job off the pin. Yeah, fighting for every point here. 
Anna Taylor will check into the front row. We'll look to see some combination plays for her. She's working over on that right side right now. Three, three kills. Bracing her. A little off balance reception. All going to be sent into the net. That went off Abel Martin. That's one of the most physically difficult shots that you can make as a volleyball player. When you are far off the net and a ball has to travel over your left shoulder to your attacking arm, they say that's one of the main ways they train for the Olympic team, how you audition, is that they just make players for those camps hit out of system balls over their opposite shoulder over and over and over again. Ava Martin returns there with an absolute cannon shot. Gets that one down for her ninth kill. And we're even again at 14 here in a second. With Martin and Sis as offensive weapons, they haven't even really needed to utilize their other attackers all that much. Because they can so effectively get kills, they don't need to force it to their middles or force it to the right side. Because they haven't been blocked, they haven't been, they haven't had any shots taken away from them. They can kind of just go up and hit it where they want. And until a team can block them and take that away, it just helps them run on autopilot. They can just keep going in system to their outsides. Corsaro serves. That last point was from Sarah Stevens. Nice kill after a sliding reception there from Emma Grace. And another impactful delivery. Let's call it that from Norris Sis. Great dancers right back. They've been going towards Spielman here on the serve often, trying to force her to be the one to play the ball. Grace with that reception. Pushed over, chance here for Creighton to organize. Swing there, and it's a point for Creighton as it got down from Jay and Johnson just inside the line. Trading points here, close set here. Here's just to serve. Good start there from Spielman. They center. Spielman delivers and just underneath it lifted it past the corner. Seventeen, fifteen, Blue Jays. Trying to force Spielman to play that first ball before she can pass. A rare miss from Emma Grace there on the receiving. A sinking serve there from Norris Sis. Comes up with an ace for Creighton and is Creighton's second ace of the day, 18-15, and a timeout here is Creighton now mounting a 4-0 run. It's interesting when you just listen to the sounds that are happening on a <laughs> volleyball court because it's such an audible sport, and so the way it typically works is for that very first time that you're receiving the serve, the setter has made a play call, and so the outside, the middle, and the right side all know what set. If it's a good pass, this is what I'm supposed to run. But after that, it becomes a free-for-all and it switches to an audible scenario. So every time the ball crosses over the net from there, the yelling that you hear is each attacker calling for the set that they want. So it might be a high outside set. It might be one that's a couple feet inside the pin. It might be a really quick what, first tempo one where there's already an attacker airborne when the set's happening. And from there, that's when it's the setter's call of, even though I'm hearing these three calls, this is who I'm going to give it to. So that's where it's really important to have good communication between the attackers and the setters so that they know the optimal play to run when they are in those out of system situations where they do have to make a gut call. I'm like, okay, I'm not, I just passed the ball. I can't get there fast enough to run a one first tempo quick ball. It has to be a high outside. So just as you watch the game, it's always interesting to listen to the amount of communication and yelling that's going on. They're not just cheerleader rah rah. Right. It, there's an intention behind each of the calls that are happening during the point. So those attackers do that with a number? How do they verbalize that that quickly? Each team has a play. playbook of what everything's called. So it might be I run a 2-2-2 two, two, two means a high middle set. Or if I run a hit, 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 that might be a high right side. So every team speaks their own language of this is what it's called. And so on that first set, you'll see 
codes hand signals behind the shirt of the setter before every point, and that's her play call. That's like the quarterback huddle before every play. That's a attack here, therefore the Musketeers be the second straight for Xavier here in this sequence, and Creighton now at 20. The magical psychological edge for every set. That's right. Once Five you see go. that 20, it's like, okay, it's getting intense now. We got to <laughs> buckle in here. Norris is working on a 6-0 run here. Great dig by Bracinger on that offering from Spielman and ball dump just in front of the net. Beautiful work there by Kiera Reinhardt. Yeah, Reinhardt put that one down with authority. A 6-3 senior. She's done that a few times in her career. Assist to serve. Good start there for Greece and the Musketeers. Swing there for Taylor. That one sent back. It's Reinhardt alongside Martin. That was just a perfect serve receive pass there from Emma Grace. You don't want it super tight to the net. You want it probably a foot or two off the net, high enough that the setter can get her feet under it. And that was exactly what Emma Grace did. Trouble in the back row there. Grace sends it up. Spielman sends it over. Free ball. We'll see what Creighton does with it. Hammer there right off the block. That is Jaya Johnson. Johnson second. And now it is two away from set point here in the second. 9-0 run now for Creighton. Perfect pass from Spielman there. Dumped over flaw. Great job there by Bracinger to keep that alive. Actually, that was weight kept it alive. Quick set. Nice dig. Emma Grace back row for the Musketeers. Xavier scrambling, and Emma Grace finds the right corner, stops the run at nine. Smart play by Emma Grace there. She wasn't able to hit the top of her jump just from, she had just played that beautiful dig. She was able to identify, I'm not in the perfect spot where I can swing away, but she placed it so nicely back in that right corner. Eloise Jankowski sends it into the tape. And now it is set point here in a second for the Blue Jays. Musketeers have some, mat some set points to battle out, battle out back from here. Olivia Hausman trying to finish it off here. Nice reception there by Tchaikovsky. Sent over, Spielman sent it wide, trying to touch it in on the front row, and that wraps up set number two, 25-16 Creighton. It follows a 25-13 first set victory, and we will go to our five-minute break with Creighton up two to nothing. 13 University final day for the regular season for the Big East Volleyball, and the Creighton Blue Jays trying to complete their third undefeated season in program history. At 18 and 0, they've won 19 in a row coming into today. Yeah, Musketeers have their work cut out for them here in this third set. But with this being senior day, this is the last match at home for some of these seniors. This is where you can see, you kind of see what people are made of at this point. Do they dig in? fight back and then sometimes you can see a little bit of the emotion come out where they do start making some unforced errors. So we'll see what Xavier team shows up here in this third set. Musketeers started with the service and we're off to a long rally to start it. That's ended by Elise Getzinger who picks up the kill. Getzinger's fourth of the day. The 6-4 senior for Creighton's had a very impressive career for Creighton. has been undefeated in 2018 and 2016 in conference play, and that was a nice ace from the Cincinnati and Sydney Bracinger. Yeah, tough cross-court float serve there. The bottom just fell out of that thing, hit the ground. Great, we'll be able to go back home and play the Big East Championship Tournament next week. Nice dump up front, that's a point for Logan Flaw. Flaw doing a nice job taking care of the ball there protecting it from any blockers, sending it back her way. Creighton into the semifinals. St. John's or DePaul will be the opponent. You know, the four or five seed, DePaul has to face Marquette today. That one started at one. Swing across, Getzinger dug out by Flo. Swing there for Emma Grace, sent it wide, and 
Nice discipline over there by Bilinovic to watch that one slide past the line. Ava Martin to serve. Clean reception back row for Grace. They set her here. Good start by Bilinovic. Dumped over. Dug out flaw. Off the block, it'll be a point for the Musketeers and Emma Grace. Wait, and gets her there to pin. Grace just has so many more swings. She has three or 400 more swings than anybody else on the team. She is the go-to player. She passes the ball, digs the ball, attacks the ball. Where, But as, it, as great as that is for the Musketeers, it becomes very obvious to the other teams they're playing in their scouting report, where they start to learn how to defend against her. Bill Novick saved the return of that free ball. Logan Flaw, nice dig out on Getzinger. Getzinger sits. Block and a point for Creighton. Nora Sis comes up with it. Powered through. You could see all four hands were there, but Stevens let it go just at the last second and let the power kind of get the best of her where it fell back behind the plane of the net. Bill Novick to serve. Put together an 8-0 run in the first set. Trouble here, Paul Xavier. Grace pushes up for Spielman, who sends it over. Trouble now for Creighton. Pushed over, and it turns into a point. Nora Sis bails out the Blue Jays on a little scramble over there at the far pin. Again, this has been just a really tough rotation for the Musketeers to defend against with Villanova. And you can see she's kind of intentionally serving cross court over her very tall three players in the front row. They kind of serve as a screen, so it makes it hard for the Xavier passers to see over the top where that ball's coming. So not only is it coming fast, but they can't see it the entire time. Villanova trouble there. Spielman, a diving attempt at a reception, and that ball sent out. Villanova showing no. She is one of the top servers in the conference, leading her team in aces. She's kind of going forward and back, sometimes going deep to the corner, across to Spielman, sometimes coming up short. Good start there for Corsaro. Stevens with the attack, and that one sent long. Was hoping for a touch call there, did not get it. So the last ball she served was a hard driven right in between Spielman and Corsaro. We'll see if she lightens up or if she continues to go deep with it. Bill Nolan from Independence Ohio. She was a transfer in from Penn State where she had 790. Peru digs 58 aces. Penn State always a national power as well. It's a point there for the Musketeers. Stop the run. That one from Anna Taylor. Taylor's third. Corsaro to serve for the Musketeers. Clean start there. Swing for Martin. Dug out Corsaro, but a whistle. Looks like Xavier had a net call there. Touched the net on the block. Point there for the Blue Jays. Service for Kendra Waite. I think they played an out ball there. Blue Jays, Sis sends it over. Dug out their flaw, Corsaro for Spielman. Spielman got it through the block. Knocked it off Reinhardt and down. Spielman having a pretty good match today. Able to take a couple kills off this tough Creighton team, power through that block. Even when she was far off the net there, she still was able to power through. Spielman's second kill. Eight middle, and that's a point for Reinhardt. Reinhardt made a smart play there. She didn't swing away, was not in the perfect hitting position, but was able to kind of turn her body, hit an off-speed shot to find that deep corner. Here's Nora Sis to serve. This with 15 kills on the afternoon. That is a service error and a point for the Musketeers. Eight air for Creek. And they had 13 in their match on Friday against DePaul. Yeah, if there's a 
there's one area this team is lacking, that's what they will be practicing <laughs> leading into future matches for Creighton. This may be a teaching point for Coach Bernthal Booth this late in the season. That ball sent over and a point there for the Blue Jays. Reinhardt again, her second straight. 10-5 Blue Jays here in the third. Blue Jays took the first 25-13, the second 25-16. Service here for Sky McCune, a junior from Gretna, Nebraska. Good start for Tchaikovsky and the Musketeers. Ball pushed over Kemp. Dug out by McCune. Swing there for Simpson back row. That one sent back by Neeson and out. That'll be a solid kill there for Destiny and Dom Simpson. Six foot sophomore from Omaha. While making her play calls for Emma Grace and Margot Kent. Schakowski sends it up flaw. Middle attack there for Neeson. Touched up by Martin. Ball sent back by Emma Grace. Scramble here for the Blue Jays. Great play Able. by Waite. Martin just took charge of that situation. Now set behind. What a blast in the back row. And Martin had to wait for that to come down and still drilled it off Neeson. Um, wait again, showing her athleticism, diving out of bounds, hitting the stand in front of us, getting up and still delivering a kill. The impressive part of that, Ava Martin took like a half a swing and it went 3,000 miles an hour <laughs> down to the back row. <laughs> Ava Martin with 11 kills today. She's had now five or more kills. When it shouldn't be surprising, but 71 straight matches. It's incredible. Pretty nice. 12-5 Creighton. And Sky McCune serving again for the Blue Jays. Nice start for Tchaikovsky and the Musketeers. Flaw sets Grace. Sis got a piece of it on the back row, but sent it out. Xavier out of the timeout with a point. Stops a 3-0 run there for the Blue Jays. They've just come out of the timeouts with points today. They've had good plans in action, and that's where it speaks to Christy Pfeffenberger's ability to make a really good play call, make an adjustment that kind of picks it apart. So as long as they get that solid first pass, they have offensive options. It's just that first pass often is pulling Flaw too far off the net to go with any of the three attackers. Big swing, and that's a massive blast from Ava Martin. She delivers number 12 on the afternoon. That happened so quickly. There simply weren't any blockers up. Flaw hadn't jumped at that point. Stevens hadn't jumped. She had a wide open net to do whatever she wanted with that ball. Sydney bracing her to serve. And you mentioned Xavier's speed. That's been a talking point for Coach Tice from Marquette on Friday and last year from Coach Bernthal Booth. That is a kill there for Emma Grace. Grace either got contact or got it in behind that back line. The Musketeers pick up the point. Down six. But that's been both coaches want to coach against that. It's Xavier's really trouble when they're in system and they're attacking quickly to the middle. Yes, they run a quick offense, but it all comes down to that first pass. And even though they have great outside hitters, it makes their job so much harder if you don't have that good first pass. Musketeers trying to recover here. And a Taylor deny. Far side, that's Eva Martin alongside Elise Getzinger. Getzinger's over there at 6'4", senior from Blue Mounds, Wisconsin, transfer in from Kentucky. So used to wearing that royal blue. Now, if you live in Kentucky, that's a wildcat blue. You can't have any other color blue. It's not royal, it's not anything, it's wildcat blue. <laughs> Just for the record, if anybody's listening from the Big Blue Nation. Ball sent over, it was sent back. It was a nice job by Wade. And a recovery here from Creighton. Anna Taylor. Got the touch. Got, yep, got touched. The ball spun sideways down the line. The reason that first pass is so important, because when you have the good first pass, all three of your attackers are an option. As soon as your setter gets pulled off the net, your middle is kind of out of the picture. As soon as they're having to run forward, your right side's out of the picture. So once you have a great first ace there for Emma Grace. Grace painted the line there. If that was chalk, that would have flown up. <laughs> if you were an old school tennis fan, you remember John McEnroe and Wimbledon, chalk flew up. Crane's gonna challenge that. 
And Xavier right now, it's a 14-9 advantage for the Blue Jays. It's our second referee, Jared Mallett, over there. Scott Burnett, by the way, has been on the platform today, and our line judges are Brian Washburn and Shelby Hitchens. Call stands. So Grace picks up the ace. That is Xavier's third of the day, her first. Musketeers continue to fight here. It's the number five team in the country. Villanovic starts it off for the Blue Jays. Hammer to the back row from Martin, dug out by Grace. Xavier has to scramble to send it over. Wait, Getzinger. Point Blue Jays. Huge slide attack there from the Blue Jays. They were just able to go up and around Spielman's block. Getting her spin. Here's that tough rotation where she likes to serve the ball cross court over the top of her tall middles that are standing at the front of the net. It makes it very difficult to see the pass for Spielman and Corsaro to pass. Maddie Villanovic, another spinning sinker. And a Taylor denied, free ball sent back, and that's a point to the back row for Kiara Reinhardt. That's where Taylor was going for just over the top of the block is what she was aiming for, forgetting that we've got some taller blockers here today at 6'4", six, 6'5", six, blockers. Needed to tip the ball a little higher. Villanova. Serving Creighton 16, up by seven. Free ball to Creighton. Wait, back set this time. Reinhardt set it wide. Point here for the Musketeers. Margo Kemp back in for Xavier. And Corsaro back to serve here for the Musketeers. Stevens and Casey Quinnishay rotate out for Xavier. There's Corsaro on her senior day. Good start by Bilinovic. Last there, dug out Corsaro off the offering from Martin. Swing down a line of his 8.4. Nor assist, got the contact and got it down inbounds. The daily double for Norris is. And Martin out with a huge swing from the back row. They're really getting some long approaches. They're really building a lot of power as they lead into the ball, driving that force upward into their vertical. Wait to serve. Corsaro, clean reception there for the Musketeers. Spielman dumps over. Wait digs it out. Tight ball. Trouble there on the set. Sis. Pushed it into the net, somehow kept it alive. Villanovic fights off that from Spielman. Joust, and it's won by the Blue Jays. Pushed out by Xavier. Kendra Wait fighting off a lot of tight balls there, but still able to come up with the point on it. Back to serve again. Ace. That one from Wait. I was gonna say, as I looked at the Xavier passers here, they're really giving Corsaro a lot of court to cover. They've got Emma Grace pulled in to cover a little bit of Spielman, which leaves a lot of space for Corsaro to have to pass alone. Grace there on that one. Clean start for the Musketeers. There's a quick hitter. That's Margo Kemp with the kill. Huge play by Margo Kemp, and that's exactly the type of set that they can do when the pass is perfect. Kemp was already airborne when that ball was being set. Flaw dished it to her perfectly, straight down. Margo Kemp's third of the afternoon. Kalkowski to serve. Villanovic, tough reception. In system, they set up Sis, and Sis gets it down inside the corner. Great placement there from Norris Sis. Oh, just wide. Oh, well, was wide. Too fast to tell on that one. We got Kendra Waite in the back row. Well, service there. Comes right back to the Blue Jays. Now that Kendra Waite is in the back row, it'll be important for Creighton Blue Jays to keep the, those passes a little further off the net because she no longer has the ability to jump or she'd be considered a front row attacker. To serve great reception there for Corsaro. Swing down the line and a point for the Musketeers from Caroline Spielman. Spielman did a great job. Her body was facing as though she was going to swing cross court, but she kind of cut her arm over. 
and that down the line shot that she's so effective at. Kelsey Neeson to serve here. Good start, Villanova. Quick hitter there, and the Blue Jays answer with Kiara Reinhardt. This is where the emotions can start to kick in. You start to sense, you know, we're four points away. This is the last match in the Cintas Center. Like some of those thoughts can start to creep in that it, for some players can lead to some emotional, like I need to swing as hard as I can. And sometimes that's a responsible decision and sometimes it's not. Service here for Sky McHugh. Trouble there on the reception back row for Tchaikovsky. And that's an ace. For Creighton, the sixth of the afternoon, and a timeout here for Christy Peffenberger. Creighton needs three to complete the perfect season here in the Big East. 17 kills. Creighton hitting 435, and the Musketeers at 80. But in positive territory. Three to go here for the Creighton Blue Jays and Sky McCune. Back to serve. Musketeers will be looking to get Emma Grace the ball. Their go-to player, but on a good pass, they've got Margot Kemp they can go to for some quick tempo. McCune back row, Neeson, clean reception, Kemp over to the pin, delivers cross court. Any opportunity that they can get Kemp the ball, that's what they need to be doing to force the blockers to respect her stay over there, away from Emma Grace on the opposite pin. Abby Miller now into the lineup for the Creighton Blue Jays, one of the seven seniors for Creighton, a 6-2 middle. Wait, middle attack there for Destiny to Dom Simpson. Musketeers cleaning up back row. Quinnache sends it over. Swing on a far pin, delivery for Ava Martin, and Martin is 13 today. Two to go for the Blue Jays. They rotate in Katie Mazur. Senior from Grand Island, Nebraska. Rosaro starts it off for the Musketeers. Wall fought over a set. Neeson delivers. Middle attack. It's Neeson's first. And then Taylor checks in for the Musketeers. This is that rotation where Musketeers are so tough because they have Emma Grace and Anna Taylor, their top two hitters, in the front at the same time. Good start there. Ball ripped across. Law tried to dig it out, and it'll be a kill there for Abby Milner. Milner's first. 6-2 senior. That's a tough ball to block. Match here point here for the Blue Jays. And serving, perhaps fittingly, Ava Martin. <laughs> Service air. Well, there's a good group of Blue Jay fans on hand here today. They were standing up clapping, and that was a little anticlimactic <laughs> to come up with the service air. <laughs> we got Sydney Bracinger from Cincinnati. In the house, Manny Bilinovic from Independence, Ohio. Bilinovic, nice reception. Swing there, and that'll do it. The perfect season in the Big East comes to a conclusion. Eva Tistrake comes up with the final point for the Blue Jays. And they take set number three, 25-16. Took the second 25-16 and the first 25-13. And an impressive season. Four, the Creighton Blue Jays continues. It's their 20th in a row, and they will finish up the conference slate at 18 and 0, third time in program history. Solid. There's nothing more to say other than Creighton just played a fantastic match. They came with, they did what they came to do. They played consistently with how they have the rest of the season. This is why they've had the perfect season. So Creighton delivers on the final day of the Big East Conference. The Musketeers will end the campaign at 10 and 18 and 8 and 10 in Big East play. Xavier will be on to Senior Day ceremonies here, and that'll wrap it up for us. So for Shannon Murphy, I'm Mike Schmaltz. Thanks again all season to our Overshaft production crew, Dave Overbeck, Chris Schaff, leading the charge here at Cintas, and Abby Curtis, the Sports Information Director from Xavier. Again, the final here, Creighton finishes off a perfect season, a 3-0 sweep of the Xavier Musketeers.